I thank the gentleman from Indiana. Uh, it's my privilege to get a chance to be able to speak out for the constituents that I represent who are asking the same questions a lot of Americans are asking. Why did you just drop my hours? People that have jobs go to work every day trying to pay for their family, barely eking by, working hourly, suddenly got their hours dropped. And they're asking all of us, why did this happen? Well, the difficult thing is we're trying to explain to people it happened because more people were needed onto the exchanges, and so the administration needed additional people to get onto this health care coverage. So it isn't actually something to help people. It's something to help the administration and their formula, which makes them even matter. They don't want to be a pawn in some game. They want to take care of their family. They want to be able to do what they can do in their job and to take care of their kids and to play soccer with them on weekends and be able to spend time. But things have changed dramatically for them now. So would it be accurate to say that, in part, it's, a, it's, it's our lower income to middle income workers through reduced hours who are paying for the Affordable Care Act, which is wildly unpopular nationally? It is, and it's wildly unpopular largely in that group as well. Every section of Americans, when you go and get a chance to visit with them, they'll tell you the same thing. My premiums went up. My deduction went up. I lost access to a doctor. I had to change to a different hospital. I lost some of my choices. And this whole, this whole belief that suddenly now we have 7 million new people that got there, millions of those individuals that are now in the exchanges used to be on health care that they liked. They were kicked off of it January the 1st. And now they're forced into a, a new system and the president's somehow celebrating. And, and I, I was astounded by the sense of at the very last minute, all these people filed and they got excited about it. There are around 42 million people that are uninsured in the United States. Seven million of them have actually capitulated to the administration's forced uh, enrollment into this program or face a fine. That would be something to akin to during tax day coming up just 15 days from now, the administration standing up and celebrating that 25 percent of Americans actually filed their taxes on time because they would face a fine if they don't. Well, no one would actually celebrate that, but this administration is celebrating 25 percent of the people actually following through on it. There are real lives and real people that are attached to this. Let me tell you about one of them. Her name is Cindy, and like some of the other individuals that were here visiting before, and uh, Mr. Kelly from Pennsylvania, didn't want her name put out publicly on it because in this day and age, people are becoming more and more afraid of their government and what their government is going to do to them rather than for them. So Cindy works at a job at a restaurant. She works more than 30 hours a week and then finds out after the transition happens January the 1st, they're dropping her hours back to 26 hours a week. 26 hours a week is really hard. Her, her job plus 30 hours was really difficult to be able to make ends meet. She can't make it at 26 hours. So now this individual has to go out and try to find a different job to add up two different jobs. Let me talk to you about a dad that his son just graduated from high school. Didn't make great grades in high school, and, but he's a good hard worker. And so he's engaged in a job and he's out looking for a job, doesn't have a college degree, and he's like, I said, he's just a working guy. Cannot find a job for more than 28 and a half hours. So he's looking for two jobs to try to get that, to try to build up to enough money to be able to do it. So there's suddenly this sense of we're going to help provide for people by forcing people to get to this, this uh, providing health care, what's actually happening is people are just dropping the hours. It's the same thing everyone said before. And the president's statement today that there's no good reason to go back on a time before Obamacare, I'd have to tell you, Cindy would disagree with that. This other gentleman would disagree with that. A lot of people would look back and say, I would much rather go back to working one job than be forced to work two jobs and still not have health care coverage. You mentioned a uh, very compelling story, incidentally, and, and I think all of us hear these stories, Republican, Democrat, Independent, uh, it, it matters not. Uh, I suspect we all hear them around our district. Uh, and uh, you mentioned the President's statement of administration policy, which came out today, April Fool's Day. Right. I had to wonder whether it might have been an April Fool's joke. It in part reads, Rather than attempting to once again to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which the House has tried to do over 50 times, it's time for Congress to stop fighting old political battles and join the president in an agenda focused on providing greater economic opportunity, and then it goes on and on. Listen, this is not a repeal of the Affordable Care Act. This is a repeal of a provision that we recognize 
that a bipartisan group of United States congressmen and, and many senators recognize is flawed. So, I mean, it's an absolute red herring. I cannot understand why the administration won't engage with us in a fair-minded, statesmanlike way to, to mitigate the pain so many Americans are feeling. Right. I, I would have to tell you, honestly, I would like nothing better for my citizens that I represent to not have to live under this law. I would absolutely vote again, as I have multiple times to repeal this entire law. But I also have a responsibility to do whatever I can to protect the people of my district from the harmful effects of this law. And this law has many harmful effects. One of them is it's forcing those that struggle the most in our economy to make two ends meet, to have to go out and get multiple jobs, and it's made it even harder for them in transportation, in timing, in time with their family. They're losing all of those things, and it's been taken away from them based on a preference of an administration, not something that's actually economic responsibility of the president. Well, I'd like to have